Greetings, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. It's wonderful to be back with you here on Points of Light Radio. It's always a pleasure taking this journey of light and knowledge with you. If you've noticed in the past little while, I have been kind of circling back and covering some of the organizations that we haven't covered in a while. Right? We recently revisited our friends in the Elks, right? As well as some of the other organizations that I've covered, right? And in this particular segment of Points of Light Radio, we're going to be revisiting a organization that we covered in the May 15th, 2022 segment of Points of Light Radio. And that organization is the Loyal Order of Moose. Now, just to refresh your memory, the Loyal Order of Moose is a fraternal and service organization founded in Louisville, Kentucky in the spring of 1888 by a gentleman named Dr. John Henry Wilson. Now, the Loyal Order of Moose today is headquartered in Moose Heart, Illinois, and will be 138 years old this year. Now, as I said in my previous segment of Points of Light Radio, the Moose was originally intended as a men's social club, but it has evolved down through the years, and today it is open to both men and women. The Loyal Order of Moose has had and does have some very prominent members of society in its ranks. Some of the past members were four presidents of the United States, Warren G. Harding, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, and Harry S. Truman were all members of the Loyal Order of Moose. It's also had numerous entertainers and athletes as part of the organization. My guest for this particular segment of Points of Light Radio is Dunya Markham. Mrs. Markham is the president of the Loyal Order of Moose Lodge number 291 in Portland, Oregon. I'm really looking forward to revisiting this organization. Right? And as I keep saying, I would have covered it earlier if I had been able to get some members to come on. So I really appreciate Mrs. Markham taking the time to shed some further light on this organization. So let's have her do that. But are you still thirsty for knowledge? Are you still searching for the light? Then just trim your lamp and follow me after this. Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of light and secret knowledge wherever you may be, you are listening to Points of Light Radio, the podcast dedicated to taking you past the apron and behind the closed doors of lodges everywhere. And here is your host, Stan Miller. Um, welcome to Points of Light Radio. Thank you. Now, you are the president of the Loyal Order of Moose, number 291 in Portland, Oregon. Correct. Yes. Why don't you tell my listeners and viewers about yourself, first of all? <laughs> um, well, I've, been a, I've lived in Portland. My husband and I, we have a family here, raised a family here in Portland. Um, we live really close to the lodge. We're about a a little under a mile away from it, um, and uh, we've been members since 2014. Wow. Um, so my husband just recently was the president for a full year, and I was uh, vice president or junior president, and then um, I stepped up to take over um, and was elected in last April. Okay. Now, uh, was was it in your family before you joined or no my husband has always been really interested in in those kind of in fraternal organizations um i'm a member of the church of jesus christ of latter day saints so i'm kind of used to um you know organizations like that yeah. uh, but um no we just we actually were interested in in it because we were getting we got married in 2013 and we called to see if we could rent the space they never returned our phone call so we went 
down with the Catholic Church down the down the street. Um, but uh, we walked by and they were doing like a fireworks display. We started talking and my kids had to go to the bathroom. And so we went in and and that was that. And we just really fell in love with it. Okay. Well, it, it, and but tell us about the moose, the loyal order of moose itself. What have you learned about them since? What do you know about the history of it or? Um, late 1800s, 1888, mm -hmm. if my memory serves me. And it was started, oh, you know what I did? I was supposed to do my homework and, and I looked well, it up fine. and I had forgotten like where the first lodge was. But it really was started like a lot of fraternal organizations where it was for, for younger, for young men and, you know, people to get together and socialize and find something find something to do um and of course it's really evolved since then um and what i really appreciate about it is the commitment to community service both locally and nationally so what we're able to do within our literally within our neighborhood um and then you know, statewide with other lodges, we have our district meetings, the things we can do together. And then of course, the big support of Moose Heart and Moose Haven, which uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, but on one end, it's a school for, for youth that don't, you know, for whatever reason, they're not able to be in their own homes. Um, and so they are in this, they're able to go to the school. And then on the other end, Moose Haven, which is a retirement um, living community. Okay. Now tell us about the 291. Now how long has the, the lodge there been around? A long time. <laughs> yeah. Again, I mean, I, I, I should have done my homework on that That's one. That's fine. I'm uh, not longer, a longer, lot longer than you've been. been a lot ever. longer, and we were in closer to Central East, uh, Central East side. I don't know if you're familiar with Portland at all, but closer to downtown, we had a, there was a larger um, uh, bi uh, building that we were in. And so um, where we've been, um, it's been, yeah, I'm trying, I'm, again, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank right. on how long exactly we've been on there, but it's been a good many decades that we've been at that yeah. building. It was a former Methodist church. Now, what exactly are your duties as the president? <laughs> Um, everything. Wow. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, there's, um, there's an, a, there's a board, of course, there's a president, you know, vice president, treasurer, chaplain, administrator, um, and president works really close with the administrator just to oversee everything that goes on in the lodge to make sure that committees are meeting, to make sure the bills are paid, um, to make sure that everything we're in good standing, um, that we're not breaking any rules. And then of course, communications with other lodges uh, in our, you know, lodges are in a district. So like the state of Oregon has several districts of lodges um, and just to oh, kind of oversee and make sure that things are running smoothly um, to listen to what people's concerns are, what their wishes are, um, you know, what their complaints are uh, and be able to, you know, to process all that through, um, a good, you know, we have our general meetings and our board meetings, uh, allowing people to take do proposals to what they would like to see at the lodge or what they would like to undertake, um, and just making sure that all, that all runs smoothly. And then, of course, there's the lodge, but there's the chapter. The chapter is the women of the lodge, okay. um, and so as you may know, it used to be the lodge, and then the chapter, and the lodge was the men, and the chapter was the women, okay. and now we are one lodge. That's what, which is why I'm able to be elected as president as opposed to, you know, just a few years ago, it was all men. Yeah. Um, but the chapter is kind of the backbone in terms of the, the community service supporting the uh, Moose Haven and <clears throat> the Moose Haven and Moose Heart charities. So we work closely. So they have somebody, the chapter has some uh, person in a position, which would be the equivalent. They're called a senior regent. And so the president and senior regent work together as well to make sure that the chapter is as supported as it needs to be. Okay. And how many, how, how you talk about meetings, what do you have? Monthly meetings, weekly meetings? We, there, if you're on the board, it's a weekly meeting. So the lodge, which is everyone, we have two, uh, 
two Mondays a month, we have what's called a general meeting where everybody, all members are welcome to attend and then you hear what's going on. And then every alternating week is a board meeting and that's just for board members of the lodge. Um, and then the chapter meets once a month okay. on their own. All right. And now you, you mentioned some uh, offices within the lodge, but does the moose have a degree system? They do. And I am absolutely not the person to ask about that okay. uh, because that is something that I have not participated in. My, I have recently only come on when, once we became one lodge. So like there is, there are degrees, um, various levels with that. Um, and that's all in wonderful, but that was not something that I was interested in. And so once the focus was off of that and we became one lodge, that's when I really felt more comfortable to become involved. So you definitely, if you want to know more about that, I can well, put you in touch. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you don't necessarily even have to participate in the degrees. You can no. No, all right, that's no, interesting. Uh, no. <laughs> they're all they're optional. That's that's interesting. That's a first. Yeah. yeah. And what 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 uh, exactly does your lodge do that makes it so special? So we say, what what events are you holding? And I think we're, we're a core group of members. You know, there's. I mean, I do the mailer every month, so there's like a hundred and thirty five on our mailing list, you know, so that's approximately that many members of who comes into the lodge. Of course, it's maybe 10 to 15% of that people that come in actively, but we're all very close. Um, and I think it's our ability to rise to whatever the need is, right? So, you know, if we are approached by a community member and they would like us to do a clothing drive for because it's a harsh winter to have a clothing drive for for the our houseless community of which like so many big cities we we are really struggling with we respond right away um a holiday dinner to to for seniors in the neighborhood a free holiday holiday dinner bam it gets done i think it's the without <laughs> sense of, without politics without your personal opinion, it's what is the greater need and how can we respond immediately, which I think, um, you know, I can say like we, we have um, great meals. Yeah, I'm going to be cooking a lasagna today to drop off before my husband and I go out oh, to the beach for a few me. days. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you know, we have we have that we have we have a couple members that are really doing a lot to bring board games and dart tournaments and things like that into the community. And so there's more camaraderie. But ultimately, I think it's our ability to just respond to the need in our community um, without question. That I think is my my biggest draw. Why I what I, when you know when people who have no knowledge of what the moose does or they may know the history where it's you know it's all a bunch of white guys you know what is what is it that, <laughs> you know what is it that why i am a member my husband and i are members and that's why you know because it, it's it's just knowing what the greater good is and responding to it well now what are the qualifications when you talk about membership what 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 are the qualifications you need to be over 21 and you have to have basically a clean background check. Um, are you a, a, you know, no priors, um, you know, are you on any registries anywhere? Um, but that's, that's basically it. Leaf in the Supreme being, is it or no? You don't yes, but that the emphasis on that is definitely lessened. It's not, <laughs> you know, it's, it's definitely not Jesus Christ, right? It's not like no. one God. It's a, yes, belief in a higher being, but that I don't, that's not the emphasis here. You know what I mean? Like I would say that there's not so much of an emphasis as there was in the past. So what, 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 uh, what do you feel like being, being in the loyal order of moose has done for you? I ultimately, I mean, I have some great friends, um, you know, uh, for me, it's knowing that you can help people both locally and in a greater level in a way that's a lot more approachable than we think, if that makes sense. 
Um, so, you know, yes, there's a pl it's a place for, for friends, for family, for that to come together and celebrate each other and be in each other's company. But also knowing that it's a lot easier to be community minded and do community service than, than we often think. And what, uh, what, uh, well, by the way, what is the makeup of your lodge? Like what is, what exactly do you find old, young? It's definitely changing. So yes, we are bringing, we do have some younger families coming in. Uh, I mean, my husband and I are considered young oh. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, it's a good, it's definitely changing. So it's a good spread of younger families with, you know, people that have been around um, for decades, for a long time. You need both, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think it could do for people that are looking at joining? It's a place to, it's a place to be, I think in our, um, our divided society right now, um, it's a place where you honestly and sincerely can leave that at the door we don't allow for political discussions inside. You know, you can't come in and talk about your candidate or who you don't like or who you like. Um, we haven't, if you haven't checked it out, our, our new diversity statement um, that, the, that Moose International came out with is, is pretty powerful. Uh, it's very inclusive. Um, it's, it's a place to feel like you are, you're, you're gonna be accepted. You're going to be accepted. There's going to be people that want to reach out. They want to get to know you. They want to be your friend. They want to get you involved. Um, and they're not going to judge you. And I mean that in all sincerity. I live in a very polarized city, Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Um, and it is, you know, and, and due to the nature of my work, I do have um, experience working within context of city government. Um, so I know, like, you know, how what it's like to work within the constraints where there's always a political agenda where you have to know who's who and yeah. the lodge is a place where you can you can just come and hang basically i know that sounds so simple but it's true yeah. Yeah. well mrs markham we appreciate your time today and uh, of course the cat's time as well so <laughs> have yourself oh, yeah. <laughs> have yourself a great day ma'am thank you you too that was Dunya Markham, brothers and sisters. Wasn't that fun revisiting the moose? Been a while. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to double down on my efforts to make sure that that doesn't happen again, that we wait that long to revisit an organization because I, I really, this is an organization that, uh, that really does a lot of great work and I love helping them maintain their visibility. Some things I took away from this conversation. I love how Dunya became involved. The moose was having a fireworks display and she stopped and talked to them, right? I think that points to something I raised earlier in one of my segments, which was the need to meet for these organizations to remain visible and active in their community. Well, they were very visible that night with a fireworks display, trust me, right? And of course, who doesn't, who doesn't love kids and even adults love fireworks? And I think that's wonderful. She got talking to them. Sounds like they were very open and friendly with her and she became involved, both her and her husband became involved that way. I think that's wonderful. And this sounds like a, 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 an organization that really does its best work at the community, that grassroots level, right? That, and I think that's great, right? They, they do have like the Moose Heart Lodges, stuff like that she talks about, but the bulk of their great work, and I think this is something that we miss with a lot of these organizations, is the great work that they do at that grassroots level. And I think that's wonderful. Right. The other the, the, the final thing I took away was they do have degrees in the moose. But they're not mandatory. You don't necessarily have to take them. Right. If you notice with other organizations, they want you to take them. You can take them at your own speed. But if you really want to hold the 
president of your lodge and stuff or worshipful master, you have to take them. You have to go through the degrees. This, the Moose sounds like an organization that leaves you with the option of taking them. I found that very interesting, right? But, you know, I, but that's all I have time for today. Before I go, though, I want to remind you that this podcast is available on both YouTube and Spreaker. Please share, like, and subscribe when viewing Points of Light Radio on YouTube. I also welcome your comments and input. I appreciate the comments and the input that I have, but I want to see more of it. I really do, right? You can follow Points of Light Radio on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash points of light radio. My Twitter handle is at PO Light Radio. You can see the link to my Spotify channel as well as my Points of Light Radio store in the details section of this podcast. Brothers and sisters, it's been a pleasure fellowshipping with you and my guests today. And until we meet again, just step into the light.